here we are. The absolutely on board the Enterprise in L cars with a fully functional window management, uh, basically a full operating system. This is an entire desktop environment created in Linux, which is kind of insane. I did a little how-to article on my website, uh, just kind of showing it. I also put the original creator here, which he did it in five different sections we're gonna talk about today. Application starter, the full window management, the log out features, the menu, and the status bar. All are very, very interesting, and I kinda of wanna go through them because Wow. Uh, I mean, if you're a Star Trek fan, this is, you know, pretty damn cool because not only, you know, some people are like, well, this is so much wasted real estate. I already, I already hear the negative YouTube comments coming. Like, what are you going to do with this? Well, besides love it and think it's freaking cool, it's a little more functional than you think. So there's a couple commands right off the get go. You can go maximize mode like this. So you can bring up your stuff, kind of hide a lot of the HUD that we were seeing, or, you know, we could just go full blown. Hey, I need the whole screen right here and come back. That's all just absolutely amazing. And like I said, we could do that with any application. So there's our browser right there. Totally awesome. And then full screen. So you get the maximum screen space you can think of, but when you want, you have all of this and you can easily flip through, you can close programs easily with the, this over here. So it's kind of like rewiring your brain a little bit of how to use a computer, but more in a Star Trek sense. I think that's really neat. Installation wise, there's a lot of different ways you can do it in Arch, you can do it in Debian. Um, I recommend probably Ubuntu 20, not the latest 22. That's going to have a lot of problems because there's some Python dependencies that this is going to need that uh, Ubuntu 22 is not going to be able to fulfill. Same with Debian. If you're gonna use Debian, use Debian 10 or below. Uh, so I actually put that in here. I'm using Debian 10 net install, which is the bare bones install. No GUI, no other components. When we're pulling this thing up and we're running NeoFetch, we're, we're, we're only having 700 packages in Debian, which is kind of unheard of. Like this is as bare bones as it gets. And uh, yeah, we're not using any memory, 800 megs for pretty much everything that's with the browser running like for you windows users watching this yeah pull up pull up task manager i guarantee you your chrome based browser or whatever you're using is using at least two gigs of memory <laughs> not not 800 including the whole operating system so very cool on top of all these settings so let's get into how to do this so i would start with just a base server so a bunch of 20 server Debian 10 server would probably be a good one. I did the net install. And then I just added Xorg, just apt install Xorg, apt install uh, light DM, and then probably like Firefox or whatever browser you want to use here. You, I'm kind of a particular fan of Brave, so I'd probably switch this out to that. And then I did uh, basically grabbed all his GitHub projects that he lists here and kind of made it easy. So you could just copy paste this into your um, terminal and then it would download and install all five of these components. Now there is still a lot of dependencies once you get the good base system that you're still gonna have to probably go through and sort and, and find, uh, most of which were Python and they weren't really that hard. So uh, I would just say, pay really close attention during this package and then do an apt-f install and this will fix any broken packages or missing dependencies. Usually this grabs everything in my uh, examples. And then we'll get into the actual initial configuration and kind of what all this is up here, because some people are like, okay, looks cool, but what does it do? And uh, how do I change it to my system? So that, that'll be a neat one. So let's first break down, go to the manual and break down some of the parts of L cars, which is neat. <laughs> I can't believe some nerd thought all these up. It's, it still blows my mind. But here's your basic window manager, which is this shell which you see right here. And the basic commands, Win Q will close the window manager and kick you back to your login screen. Windows M, that's how I was going between maximized, like this, full screen, and then back to regular tiled. And then we have Alt-Tab to cycle back and forth between our programs, very cool. Alt-Win, up-down, same thing, If except if you're doing multi-monitors, this 
this actually has multi-monitor support, which still blows my mind. And then Alt F4 is also a, a close. When we can rebind these, I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Uh, application menu. This is just the program here. This is kind of a way to launch into any of your applications. You see, I don't really have too much. You know, here's my file manager. Haven't really done any theming or anything, but I'll click this to close. These, these red buttons over here are the actual close buttons. I kind of dig it. So that's like your application menu on the side to open and close. And, and you can actually flip through your, <laughs> your programs over here. Super cool. Status bar. Uh, this is really neat. Uh, CPU, memory, those types of things. I think this is memory. This is CPU. And uh, I don't know what this other one. And then we also have sound up here, which probably will require a mixer, I think is what it used. So a mixer is probably another dependency you want to grab here. It's actually uh, also dash utils in this version I'm using. Um, and let's spell install correctly. Uh, this is just going to give us some sound uh, utilities so we can control our sound up here. And other fixes that you're going to need to do to make sure we have full functionality of this is to uh, change some of the status bars because there's other things here. You can actually have battery. You can have Wi-Fi. All these things can be changed. Uh, so the first thing I would do is come into your dot config off of your home folder. And you can kind of see my bottom over there. Look at Look at that. Look at that. It's so cool. <laughs> LCARS DE. And then uh, I grab these two files. Uh, now you could actually grab and edit these files directly in the ETC directory. Don't do that though. As just a best practice, I would copy uh, everything from ETC, LCARS DE, do an asterisk, and then you drop them all into this folder with space dot, or you could actually use the, the fully uh, full path name like this. Uh, to drop them all right here. So that'll give you these two files. Uh, I'm obviously not going to do that because I already made settings here. But if you go into settings XML, this is kind of where a lot of the, the actual key binds are. So lin t, that's uh, to launch terminal. If I wanted to change this to, let's say, an X to launch terminal, with just win X, I would do that. Um, if you want to switch from kitty to something else, I'd change it here. A mixer, that's uh, the also utils we just installed. Uh, and then there's just basic stuff. Um, Lin Q down here at the bottom, I changed because I don't want to accidentally quit out of the window manager. So I changed this to windows close uh, because I just wanted to be able to close my windows easily. And I, I have that same bind in my, most of my other uh, systems. So uh, I was just constantly closing the window manager when I did it that way. So those are kind of like your key binds. And at the very bottom, you can actually change some of the fonts here. Uh, so as far as status goes, uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff. This is the widgets. So everything you're seeing in the status XML is this huge section here and how this is laid out. Uh, very cool. You have your, your time, date, and star date. This is the width. It always starts usually aligned right here and then kind of makes its way over uh, and yeah, that's, it's not really that granular. I noticed this isn't pixels here is you can change just by one from a width of four to five. And then all of a sudden it's going to come all the way over to here. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I commented out Wi-Fi status and uh, battery status. So if you have a laptop, you probably want to not have these commented out. So just take out the exclamation dash dash, and then the dash dash here, and then change the values to be what uh, ever in your system. So your ethernet status is probably gonna be different from mine. So if we pull up a new window and just do like an IPA, you can notice that my ethernet status right here is actually EMP one as zero. Yours is probably gonna be different. So uh, that's where you get those values. Uh, these right here uh, can also be grab from like, I think it's like sys forward slash net classes. And you can usually grab Wi-Fi and battery uh, out in those folders as well. And then label them correctly to your laptop. And then we just have basic uh, status buttons for the programs right here. It actually runs this application Python script. The close runs the logout Python script. And a mixer is controlled with this up, down, mute, and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much it. And then we just have the temperature capsule right here. Um, or actually the temperature capsule is right here. CPU usage is here. 
and then the memory usage is here. So you can see we're using about 10% of the memory. And that is pretty much all the configurables in this system. I love it. So neat. Uh, definitely go through here. This is the GitHub project. He has five different projects to make this all work in tandem. I have all this labeled on my website. I even made some custom images that uh, if you're interested, if you're a C uh, Chris Titus member, uh, by all means, go download them. They're all part of the membership. Or if you just want to buy this outright, I, they're all available. I put a virtual machine in there so you can tinker around with this with all my customizations. Uh, and I also did a clone Zilla backup so you could restore that image to whatever computer you wanted uh, and just play around that way as well if you don't want to do any of the work. However, if you do and you really want to break it down, I'm going to try and evolve this kind of cheat sheet right here and uh, keep it kind of going and, and helping this project along. Just give it a lot of things. If you're going to donate any money, uh, go through here. I bet you if you go through his GitHub, you'll find a donation link somewhere because uh, give this guy a shout out. Uh, it's just so darn cool, which uh, if I come into his home, uh, go to the GitHub project here. They have a Discord, which is neat, uh, but it's all run by this guy, uh, software engineer and craftsman out of Germany. My hat is off to you, good sir. This just made my whole week. I had so much fun setting all this up, and I just wish more people can appreciate your work because, dude, amazing. Great job. <laughs> With that, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next one.